topic that we're covering today, the high interest books specifically targeting boys of color. And I just kind of spread some of the books that I've used in my class. I am Philip Kennedy. Uh, this is year 20 of teaching for me, all elementary ed. Uh, this is year number <laughs> eight here in Richmond. Uh, this is, I've been on fifth grade now. Uh, for the last six years, and I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed fifth grade. Prior to that, it was all third grade, um, which I enjoyed. But once the pandemic hit, I realized the new third graders are like first graders. So it's like, no, that's that that's not that's not who I am. Uh, you gotta gotta know where you fit in. Um. Before I start, I thought my email address kind of cut off. It's pkennedy at rvaschools.net. I would encourage you to just shoot me an email and then I will share the slide presentation with you. And if anybody is watching virtually, same thing, just send me an email and I'll share the slide deck with you virtually. Uh, the slide deck, it's about 60 slides. Obviously, I'm not going to go off slides. Um, it's about 60 slides on different books that focus at having males as the main character in the books. The books are from third grade all the way up to middle school. Um, that's typically right where I start. And with every book, there is a link. The link is either going to take you to an audio version of the book being read to you. Some of the books have been made into movies, so if you click the link, it'll be a clip um, from the movie on it as well. This is just some background information on slide on who I am. I did not go to a HBCU school. Um, I went to Christopher Newport University. Um, and if you heard this morning, when I graduated high school, I graduated with a GPA of 1.7. Um, and I always tell the kids that I tell all my kids what my grades were, because um, I think it's important to let them know that you can recover and move on. And I say that, and I always give a special thanks to Norfolk State University, although I did not go there. Um, I remember I was offered scholarship to go to Norfolk State, even with my 1.7, because I ran tracks and car cross country in high school. Um, but I opted to go into the Marine Corps uh, instead. Um, so, and then after I got out of the Marine Corps, I went to uh, Christopher Newport University. Um, and I thought about going to Oak State, but at that time, I went where I had to pay nothing. And Christopher Newport, they needed people that looked like me. And so that's what I followed the money and they took care of, of my schooling. Um, so I got my undergrad at Christopher Newport, my graduate um, from Western Governors University uh, in instructional design and then my EDS has pitch leadership and I'm currently working on my doctoral at Liberty, um, which I probably put on pause because I just got accepted into a program that Richmond is now doing for um, an RTR program for teachers who want to be administrators. Um, so it's like, okay, I can put Liberty on pause, the doctoral part on pause, um, to go through this program that Richard is doing um, to become uh, an administrator. And oh, one other thing I want to put. Can you go back to that one slide? Uh, the Village Initiative, it is a nonprofit that I co founded and it focuses on education and equity um, and we have, in Williamsburg because that's where I still live. Um, but I'm a huge advocate for educational equity um, and I stress the importance of literacy. Um, in the community, we built nine different book boxes called them Little Libraries, and we specifically targeted uh, the underrepresented neighborhoods in Williamsburg. Um, and so my wife and I, every Saturday or Sunday, go out and put 200 books out every Saturday or Sunday in the community. Um, and those books and everything are free for the kids to use. Okay. Um, black love. I'm all about black love. Um, this is my wife. This is us back in the day. I like, my brother-in-law refers to this as the school day. Um, for you who are old enough to know what school day is, my brother-in-law represents that. Hey, that's your school days. 
a pose and all that. Uh, uh, so my wife and I, you know, we served three years. We were blessed with uh, two two sons um, who uh, we still live in Williamsburg um, and come from a small world. So this young man here also lives in Williamsburg. Went to the same high school that both my boys went to. Um, so just a little about me. That's next one. Um, so we've heard this a lot today. And I just want to re-emphasize it. Black people can do more than gym and discipline. Um, so I just want to highlight that because we can do so much more. That's the next one. Um, when children attend schools that place a greater value on discipline and security than on knowledge and intellectual development, they are attending prep schools for prison. We cannot focus everything on discipline and security. We have to recognize the intellectual um, components of educating our children. Next one. Um, firm believer in this. The one who plant trees, knowing that he or she will never sit in their shade, has at least started to understand the meaning of life. And I think that's what we do as teachers. I think that's the connection we make as teachers. Next one. Of course, these can build strong children to repair broken men. Next one. Take a minute and read that for yourself. Oh, absolutely. You good with that? Okay. Can you go to the next slide? Now read that same thing and start reading from this way going up. <laughs> This goes to the very heart of what Mr. Trump said <laughs> earlier, if you went to his session, on perspective matters. Perspective truly matters. Next one. We're going to skip this because of time. Okay. My primary goal today is just to discuss high interest books with a focus on boys, particularly boys of color. That's the sole purpose. Uh, what I want you to walk away from this is having to understand the importance of these type of books. Awesome. So, diversity in children's books, 73% of all children's books, the main character in the book, are white, 73%. And then the next highest percentage is animals and trucks. And you see that, I think it's 12% of them are animals and trucks. And you kind of see when you start looking at the minorities where they fall and as being main characters in books. Representation matters. Our kids have to see themselves in the text that they read. All right. And just some statistics. Three out of four school stamp recipients cannot read above the fourth grade level. When you look at that, that's kind of scary. Next one. Black and Hispanic students are roughly two to three years of learning behind white students of the same age. This has been exacerbated since COVID. So it's even more now that we have COVID. The one thing COVID did was show us the true disparities that exist between uh, the ethnic groups and the social economic groups. Six five percent of children cannot read consistently by third grade, become incarcerated or on welfare. So making connections, I'm the one that should do this. So in order to make connections in reading, we want to make sure we select real world text. Select text that the kids can connect to. Um, and that's the only way we're going to address the learning loss. We keep hearing a lot about that because COVID. You got to connect, book, select books that are real world that the kids can uh, connect with. Um, text can be read aloud. I think we miss a lot on that. It, 
If there's ever a more important time to do read alouds, it's now to accommodate for some of their learning loss. Because very often we don't expose our children to text because we automatically say this text is above their grade level, they don't want, they can't read. Um, but we as a people are very oral, we're very audio when it comes to speaking and learning. So reading texts to students are extremely important. And they also, in the read aloud, it just creates opportunities to dialogue. It creates opportunities so the kids can kind of talk through things and connect the text to themselves, to their community, and to the world as a whole. So all the books, the, all the names that you see up here in this focuses on, it is the main character in a book um, of a minority. Um, this book here, Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Boy, it is a phenomenal book. Um, I often say, as adults, you read the book first so you can have those conversations with, those, with the kids. Um, Emmanuel Acho also does a podcast series that's Uncomfortable Conversations with Black Men. Um, so it's really a, a good kind of tie-in just to connect with the kids and all the books in this um on the slide deck i intentionally did not pick a lot of books that have sports figures um there are some in there that has sports figures but i intentionally avoided uh, for the most part those books because what i see we inundate our kids with books based around sports and that's all our kids kind of tend to focus on um, but there's other areas of greatness that also exist. All right. I'm every good thing. I'm every good thing. I'm a nonstop ball of energy, powerful and full of light. I'm a go-getter, a difference maker, a leader. These are the kids we have in our classroom. We just have to tap into this. And if you stop thinking about this, when you look at this book, you already see who's on the front of this book. And those are the type of books we want to put in front of kids. And before I move forward, how many, how many of you remember the first book you read that had someone in the book that looked like you? What was your first? Do you remember? It's hard to remember. It, it is. It's definitely hard. Anybody remember the name of the first book yet? That was June Bug Okay, all right. Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. My kids reading that in their cl in class now. Yes. Do you remember your first one? No. It was uh, Martin the King. Okay. Okay. And that was the first one. Okay. I forgot that the first one was actually the Watson book. Ah, <laughs> let me tell you, Christopher Paul Curtis, hands down for me, you know, but not buddy, you know, so so for me, the kids connect to that book almost immediately, especially it was personal for me because as a foster parent for years, I mean, just to go through that book and just kind of hear some of the stuff that goes on. Um, but yeah, so putting books in front of kids that have something that they can connect with right away. That's gonna be the key to get them to love reading. That is truly gonna be the key to get them to love reading. Many times, school divisions, and I've been in enough of them, um, they buy these pre-packaged programs. Um, then you get all these books, and I'm looking through these books and say, well, wait a minute. None of these books have anyone in there that looks like me. Um, and you always wanna say one of the things they used to drive my wife crazy until she just got accustomed to me doing it when my kids were in school. When I would go to parent teacher conferences, I would say, well, so what books do you have in here that feature African-American males as the main uh, character? I always heard, oh, we have Dr. Martin Luther King, and either. that's the first one they always going to say. Yeah. Um, one of the things I often tell I encourage people to do is go in the classroom. If someone said they have a diverse class, just so cool. I love diverse. Can I see the class library? 
when you go look in that class library, you'll see how diverse their class is. It's one thing to say I have a diverse selection of books. It's another one to actually have them there for people to actually look through. Um, now, this does not have an African-American male as the main character, but this is one of the books that my kids got hooked on um, Hatchet. And there's about, I think there's about six or seven books in this slide deck where African-American is not the main character. Um, no, I'll take that back. It's probably about 15 because some of them are Latino main characters. Uh, some are Asian-American main characters. Um, and so... But there are several books in here that had such a significant impact on my boys um, in my class that it's like, oh, Mr. Kennedy, can we read the next one? So, you know, we have Hatch, we have Brian's Winter after that. But the main character in the book is a boy. All right? and, and that's the key of trying to get the kids hooked on them. So I do try to throw that in as well. Next one. All right. Free Lunch, great, great book. Um, and it ties directly to many of our kids, how most of our kids are on free, free lunch. Um, and it just goes through the stigma that the person feels about it. Um, but it is overall a great book to kind of just dive into. Uh, and the kids can kind of connect to it just because of what goes on in the book. Um, Another book that's not an African American male character in the book, but anyone's familiar with, with Rip Frank Groves? Old oh, school. I knew that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, old school, right? My favorite book. And so some books are classics to me. Some books are, are just out and out classics to me um, that I do kind of infuse in. And having them infused in, what I find my students, once they know there is a male as a main character, they kind of see themselves doing some I often say some of the shenanigans that go on that we do as, as boys. Um, but it really is a fantastic book. And as I said, every slide, um, every picture of the book, you could click on it. It's either going to give you the audio version of that book. And I think audio version books, and I think I said this earlier, are extremely important for our kids today to expose them to on grade level literature. So even if you have, I have fifth graders that's reading at the second grade level, but I can literally give them the actual text of whether Red Friend grows and put them at a listening station and they can listen to the book, read to them as they follow along. It's a great way to expose the kids to vocabulary. They can listen to the tone and intonation that goes on throughout. And, and that's important because very often, when we say this kid is reading at the second grade reading level, subconsciously, we just automatically eliminate all of the high quality level texts that other kids are exposed to. When in actuality, this is a great way to expose our kids to all the other high quality texts that's out there that's on grade level and definitely exposes them to vocabulary that they don't hear uh, on an everyday basis. I know you said the Watson goes to Birmingham, but my buddy is where it began for, for many of, of the kids. Um, and it is, once again, it's a fantastic book. It goes over um, just going on a journey. And what I like about the books that I put in the slide that, you know, a lot of them have a lot of figure of language. The figure of language is huge in third, fourth, and fifth grade and just getting them to think critically about things. And they can see themselves in a lot of the text. Go to the next one. Um, Jason Reynolds is another phenomenal author, has a lot of great books out right now. Um, as, Brave, as Brave the View is a really another great book that just kind of tells the story that our kids can connect to. I am all about finding texts that our kids can connect to. Um, I know we're, right now we use the EL program. I'm one of the reading academic architects for uh, K-5. Um, and we do have some great diverse books in there. But 
you want stories that the kids can kind of connect to. So you all afford them the opportunity to get together, have dialogue and conversation about something. And then at the same time, ask them, how does this connect with your real life? And you have them talk about how does it connect uh, to your real life? You already said that. Like, yeah, I see. I had to watch the Bills of Birmingham. Great book. And once again, some of these books, in fact, are uh, movies and some are coming out as movies. Another great thing for our kids, any book that's a movie, have them read the book and watch the movie and do a compare and contrast. I mean, I think that's a great way to expose them uh, to it. And what I find, if I tell my kids this book is a movie and we're going to watch the movie after the book, they go all in. And then when you're watching the movie, they're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute, then, well, this didn't happen like this in the book. The book said this, and it's a great way to just for them to compare to and, and, and have dialogue uh, in in reference uh, to that. So now the kids had that feedback when uh, they fenced. Oh, yeah, yeah. Another great example. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. We expose our kids to it and then have them watch it on film. It's it's a wonderful thing. And a lot of books you see, once again, another old school book, y'all, we got, you know, you know, I, I'm all about that. And, and what I find about many of my students, they love animals, they love dogs. Especially my boys, they love dogs. So anything I can tie into that where they can connect to, it's a great one. And the thing is, I go back and find the 19. 72 movies, the old movie, so they can go ahead and watch it even in that. Um, and it just, it opens up so much dialogue because that's what you want our kids to do. Give our kids time to talk about what they read. Give them time to talk about their perspectives on a particular topic. Um, and that's how you grow into loving to read. I didn't love to read until I got to high school. And it wasn't until I got to that 10th grade teacher who kind of like changed everything uh, for me. Um, and, and that one person changed everything when it came to finding the love of reading. This book here, Black Boy Joy. This book, I just listened to this book um, when I, came, I took my son to Florida over spring break. And I listened to this book. This book had my mind going in all kinds of directions. Um, it is 17 different black male authors. So it's like 17 different little mini stories. Um, but it was phenomenal for me. And it was phenomenal for me because it just the different perspective that every story gave opens up talking about his grandmother. Um, the first author is just talking about what it means to go visit his grandma and how grandma world is different from the world that he knew living with his, his mom. Um, uh, the most surprising thing I learned, you know, I'm old school, so I'm, I'm still learning about the pronouns. So for me, this book was eye-opening for me because as I'm listening to it, um, there are stories in there that are directly connected to uh, all the pronouns that we as educators need to embrace and accept. Um, but once again, I'm new to it, so I'm still kind of learning all of them. But this is a great book to kind of hear that kind of information out the lives that uh, individuals go through and tell a story of friendships and relationships uh, in school settings, in uh, the neighborhood. But um, it may be my favorite book because I just read it on spring break. You know, sometimes you have all that freshness in your head. But um, Black Boy Joy is definitely a great book. Celebrates the blackness across the board um, because we are not a monolithic uh, people. Um, so definitely a phenomenal book, and I would definitely encourage everybody to uh, read that book. Ron's Big Mission. 
this is a book that is great for our younger kids because it teaches them to dream. It teaches them to dream and it, it's really, really, um, it ties into the importance of growing up and having a dream. So um, another great book, Picture to the Chickens, John Lewis. All right, this was another great book to read and just sharing it with the kids and my kids now, I am exposed to my kids to all this different literature and I put out in the room and I say, okay, we're doing deer today. So I'll drop everything and read. 20 minutes, I just want you to pick up a book. And what I realized with many of my boys is if it's a chapter book, they're not interested in reading the whole chapter book. They lose interest very quickly. So during deer time, when I do deer time, they have to pick a different book. I literally make them, deer time takes 20 minutes, pick up a different book because I have all the books are spread out just like they are in the room. Go around and just pick up a book. I just want to expose you to something. And I love it when I get the kid says, no, you can't have that book because that's my book. That's the book I'm reading. That's when you know that little 20 minutes snippet of time they've been hooked on that book and they want to go ahead and finish reading that book. And that is a great way to get our kids tied into it. Um, make sure you ask them, you know, they, they have a little four square sheet that's next to every book that because they have to give me some type of response from the book. So you're just not sitting there for 20 minutes. And I say, hey, what was this book about? Well, I don't know. I can just look at the paper and just basic information. What was the main idea of what you read today? So who were the characters? What was the problem? Was there a solution involved in that? All of those are components to get the kids tied into literacy. How is it connected to you? How is that book connected specifically to you? And they'll tell me, well, Ms. Kennedy, the first thing is like, I don't really know. And it's like, that's not going to work for Ms. Kennedy. Tell me how that book is connected. And he said, this book is not connected to me. Who is it connected to? Do you know anybody that the book can be connected to? All right. Um, Clayton Bird goes underground. Um, you know, cool pop bird dies. Um, you know, for me, I realize I'm getting old now. The kids tell me, man, Miss Cam, you old. You know, 55, they're like, you're my great great grandmother's age, and I'm trying to do the math. I'm your two great, <laughs> I'm your two great age. Um, uh, so but. <laughs> I, I try to pick these books um, that has a music vibe to it as well, because then I can pull in jazz. I can pull in other things along with it. While the kids are reading silently, I can put some jazz on the background. As I know, that's my way to pull them in to the text. Um, playing music for kids is a great way to tie them in. Um, whatever you have them do it like drop everything and read. Pick a genre of music they don't traditionally listen to. They don't traditionally listen to because then I guarantee you, the next time they hear that, they can remember, oh, I was reading this book when I heard that music before. So I intentionally pick that. I also do a lot of instrumentals. Um, so I'll do uh, the black violin. So the black violinist. That's how you get the hip hop music in there because any hip hop music that exists right now, you get the black violinist or the black celloist and they are playing the cello or the violin to current music. So, and that's a good way to expose our kids. Still literacy is deeply ingrained in that, but to get the music part of them where, where they are, because our kids are used to being stimulated all the time. And, you know, and that's one of the things uh, virtual has done for our kids. We have to keep in mind that for some of our kids, the virtual world, that was their foundation. You know, when we were in second, first, second, third grade, our foundation was in the classroom learning. But right now, a fourth grader did not finish their whole second grade year because of COVID. They did third grade, all virtual. 
And so they're rolling back into school as a fourth grader having a year and a half off with a lot of stimulation come from everywhere. So reading is a great way to just kind of pull them back. I cannot stress to you enough to read aloud to the kids. And that's all about this. Not just we all think, oh, I just do read aloud from kindergarten to fifth grade. Read to all kids. It just exposes them to a vocabulary that they're not used to. All right. The Harlem Hellfighters. Great, great story. This is actually a movie. Um, now, about the 369th Infantry Regiment. And so, great. I see you right now and everything, sir. If you, if you send me an email, I'm going to send all this. I'll send you this whole entire slide deck. And like I said, I got two books for you. That, um, Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. Fantastic. Um, this is also has been turned into a movie on Netflix. Once, once again, it, it's a great way for the kids to read the book, and then they can watch a movie, and they, it allows them to have dialogue. And if you, even if you don't want to show them the entire movie, showing them snippets of a movie, you can do a lot of comparing, contrast in that you use all the other skills that the kids need to be successful readers. That's what that was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, so, exceptional men in black here, and I bold James Baldwin, Aaron Douglas, Oscar Devereaux, um, Lama. So this is a really good book. And let me say this. You would be surprised how a fifth grade boy, when you give them a picture book, you think, okay, this book is too big. For, for these kids. You can do a whole entire lesson from a picture book. And the kids, once they get the basic concept on what you want to do and how you, they want, how you want them to critically analyze the pictures, they're going to surprise you because they start bringing in what they know, their life, and they connect to it. And that's what you want them to do. You want them to connect their lives to the book, whether it's text or in pictures. But this is, like I said, another great book. And like I said, every book has a link to it. Ode to a Fresh Cut. This book right here tells a story that I think all of us can kind of relate to. You know, me, not so much anymore, but you know, all of us can kind of connect to when you walk out that barbershop after getting your hair cut, you know how you feel. I can't tell you how many conversations my students have regarding this book. And they're very, very different. And what I loved about this book when I first exposed the students to it, um, weeks later, month later, they'll say, they'll come in there, you get a good haircut, my kids will I see you. I see that crown. They just tie, and so that lets me know that that book had a huge impact on them. And that's what you want our kids to experience. You want them to look at a text and have a personal connection where they can say, well, yeah, because this is a large part of our community. And so you want the kids to see text within our community. Black boy, black boy, once again. Colin Kaepernick, old school, you know, Sam Cook. Anybody know Sam Cook here? All right, okay. All right, okay. All right, so once again, it's this story. So we're in April is Poetry Month. So a lot of the books I have on here are poetry based. And poetry based books are great for our kids for you to read them out loud to them so they can hear the rhythm that flows with it when you're reading the poetry. Some of our kids, especially our struggling readers, they spend so much of their working memory trying to break down and pronounce the word that they lose all the rhythmic to the text. And so that text becomes even more overwhelming to them. But when you read it with a rhythm, they kind of feel it and they kind of get a better understanding. It's like, oh, okay, Ms. Kennedy, so this is what this book is saying. And that's what you want. You want the questions to be able to come out. But it's a question, but at the same time, they're telling you 
Also, this is what this book, what this is trying to say, Mr. Kennedy. And um, my response is it? You tell me. And it's great to get those different perspectives when the kids start arguing. No, that's not what it's saying. That ain't what it's saying. Or their favorite. You, you cap it. You know, hey, that's not, you know, so, but it's good for them to have that dialogue, right? Uh, of course, Lonnie Johnson, everybody know about the super sober. Uh, and so, what our kids don't, you know, and that's the purpose of me bringing these kind of texts to our kids. Hey, you can read about somebody that looks like you. Look what it is. Look, look what happens. Even as, for me, this is a book I use in my science class because kids think science. When you do an experiment, they think if it didn't end the way you wanted to end, it was a complete failure. This book teaches you quite different. So he was going one way and ended up inventing this. And that is what science is about, but that's what literacy is about. This is the book that I'm reading now. I just started reading this book on Friday. Um, and so far, it is definitely a great book, and I can see myself incorporating it next year um, into, into my class. Um, so it goes next. So, and some of these books I've read, used them in class, and some of them on my list of, okay, I'm gonna see where we go with this book. Right here, Ghetto Cowboy. All right, so you think, oh, they're not gonna enjoy this book. They did. Very few people realize how many cowboys were black because it's not something you see. And so kids don't realize, what do you mean, Mr. Kennedy, cowboys are black? They often think it's what you see on TV. On TV, you don't ever see any black cowboy. But this book gives them that uh, perspective. Say, no, you know, black cowboys were very prevalent. You don't see them now, but they were very prevalent. And this book is actually um, a movie as well. Um, Idris Elba plays the main character. And I think if you watch Stranger Things, one of the main characters. So this book is also a movie, and it's all linked. You click on that picture, it'll take you to that as well. But um, once again, books, movies, great books for your kids. And even if you just show them a clip of the movie before they read the book, just to get them hooked and let them know, okay, we're going to watch the rest later, that's the way, that's what you do. Black Brother, like, this is a great, great book. Because one of the things in our culture we struggle with is colorism. Light skin, dark skin. This is one of those great books that just kind of tells a story um, of life happening. And look next. Read this for yourself. Read this for yourself. 100 Things Black Boys Should Do and Know. So definitely read this. Some of this stuff is like, oh, you may take a grand like, duh. But there's other things in here like, well, you know what? I never thought about that. And that makes sense. So definitely, I would say, read that book uh, for yourself. Some of the older kids, I think you say you teach at a high school level, a great book just for them to read, just to have some dialogue. And they can just read a couple pages out of that and offers the uh, dialogue to be built around just one of the things that every Black boy should know. Not a main character as a person of color, um, but wonder teaches the kids about him. It teaches the kids about him when you are born different. Um, I picked this book because one of my students, I, I don't know how I did not know this, but one of my students had a prosthetic leg. And I did not know it um, because he was just a typical kid. And so when I asked, hey guys, we're gonna do our movie at lunch. And so what movie, and I just gave them a list of movies and they didn't pick this movie. They picked all the rest of them because we saw that, we saw they saw this and no one had saw this and so I started playing this. And the kid, 20 minutes into the movie, comes up to me, he goes, Miss Gary, Miss Gary, you know I'm different too. 
And this is a kid that it even shocked me that he says, I'm different too. And I was like, boy, go sit down. Huh? You know, that was my response. Boy, go sit down. And he goes, no, I know you know. And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Come to find out he has a prosthetic leg. And he was like, so I said, so are you like the movie? He's like, yeah, yeah, we're going to be able to watch it all. And I said, well, I'm going to have to break it up. We may not be able to see it all. And his request was, well, Ms. Karen, do we have the book? And I was like, yeah, I got the book. And so we watched all of his stuff for the last 30 minutes of it. And he was like, where's the book at, Ms. Karen? Because I, I need to finish this. And so I gave him the book. We got to where we left off in the movie and tied it with the book. He went ahead every day doing independent reading. He went ahead and read that book and finished up. That's the connection we want to make with our kids. We want to be able to get them to find the text that they love. Um, this one is another great book, once again, not uh, African-American as a male character, but it's a book to deal with emotions and loss when someone dies. Um, and that's why I picked this book uh, for the kids. Another one, Holes. Um, that book came from when I was teaching in, in York County. Kids loved it so much. A movie's tied to it. Once again, anything that a movie's tied to, you can get the kids hooked. And the thing about text for me is I can teach, you can teach. Every single reading as the law standard from one book. And if pick a book that the kids are hooked to. Very often we get so structured, even in RPS, on this is the text every kid is going to read. And when you have the majority of kids not interested in that text, it becomes a true struggle. Okay, so tell me what you want the kids to know. If you want them to know these SOL standards, let me get a high interest book that I know they're hooked on, and I can do that through this. Um, so, Liberation of Gabriel King, another great book, more so for your quiet kid. Um, everyone, all of us have that quiet kid who might be afraid a lot, um, but this is a great book for, for that type of kid. Um, poems about amazing Latinos. Um, I haven't read this one. I just read the synopsis of it. It reminds me of, um, I, if I was still a Greek, you're a karma, right? That would be a great book. I mean, it's a great book for everyone, but I picked you a Cardinal because I know the population at Cardinal. Um, and Cardinal is I know before Cardinal was Cardinal, it was Green. And when I was at Green, Green has, most people don't realize this, Green, Green has the largest concentration of Latino students in the state. Uh, most people don't know that. It's right here in Richmond. I didn't know that. When I got hired in RPS, um, I'm thinking, oh, you know what? I'm going to finally teach at a school with kids that look like me. And they're like, Ms. Cannon, I want you interview at Green. I knew the MLK, they were going to hire me. And then I was like, Ooh, middle school, am I ready for middle school? And then I got green picked up. When I went there, it was like 28 students in the class, not a single African American student in the class. And of those 28, I think only nine of them were speaking English in fifth grade. And so, but this, this we are great book, as well as Esperanza Rye, our current fifth grade. That's another great book to have the main character, um, a Latino main character. But it's a great book. I um, would definitely look more into this as well. Once again, poetry. This is poetry one. Um, kids like to solve puzzles. It, it's sort of like that. Um, where's Waldo? Um, this here is really, they're reading a book, but they're looking for clues to try to solve. They got to piece something together, sort of like a whodunit type of thing. Um, this is a great high interest book. Um, you can put the kids in teams and see who can figure out who did it. Um, that's a great one to do that with to kind of build on teamwork. 
I don't have my watch. Two of five. Two. Oh, I need to stop. Okay. Um, you started have, late. You want me to skip forward a few? Yes, yes. And you just keep going. It's not going to be a Christmas. Keep going, keep going, keep going. It's, it's, we're gonna, I want you to go all the way to the end because I need to be mindful of new kid. New kid crossover. Especially for your reluctant reader, what I will tell you about this book, our kids love graphic novels. It is a graphic novel. It is great. Um, new kid class act and something strip out the last one is throwing me. But these are great books. March. Uh huh. Mid March. No, not March. Um, it'll come to me. But this is a great book for any of your kids who are reluctant readers because it's less overwhelming for them to see because there's not as many words on the text, but it's still, it's still telling them the story. You can get all your skills that you need out of this book. Um, Crossover is a great book because it's a story, it's written in poetry, but it's a story of basketball. You know, that, that's gonna hook out a lot of our kids right, right, right away. Um, crossover, Rebound, um, it's all in that series of books. Uh, but it definitely books you want to use. Uh, can you go back one slide? I think I, uh, this one. This one I just introduced to my kids. And for me, some of my boys, two in particular, oh, I want to read this book right away. This game. Just from a can, a strap, a piece, a biscuit, a burner, a heater, a chopper, a gap, a hammer, a tool, a roof. Or you can call it a gun. That, you may not think, okay, why would they read that? But it's all about making the right choice. And it's about making a choice when you have only part of the information and does your decision change from when you have part of the information versus when you have all the information. And that's what this text is about a great book because someone's sibling was killed and he gets on the elevator. And as he's going down, he meets a different person they got more of the true story of what happened. And then at the end, it's like now you have all of the information. Which path are you going to take uh, on your life? So I know I kind of zipped through that and we started late and we ended early. But if you shoot me an email, my email is up there, pkennedy at rvaschool.net, I will send you this PowerPoint, and like I said, every single slide has a link to either the movie or audiobook version of the book. All right, and I'm sorry we didn't get 